<sighs> What's happening? Are we boned? Yeah, we're boned. I just finished bucking the four cords of ash and hickory, fired up the three-year-old bear cat here, and now look what happened. It flows in town. It's not leaking from the gland end, which on a lock splitter is what you would normally suspect. It's coming from above that. But that's not a fitting, that's welded on, and there ain't nothing above it, so I don't know what the f Mother The first step for finding hydraulic leaks in power equipment. Gorgeous. Hopefully the source of the leak is a little more obvious now. Uh-oh, got a squirter. The wound must have been packed with dirt. The leak is way worse after the power wash. Oh well, into the shop with you. Looks like the weld actually cracked at the trunnion, which is really unacceptable. The weakest link on a splitter should be the engine. It's much safer for an engine to stall than for a frame weld to fail. Fortunately, this didn't snap off completely during that fatal split and release a metric sh ton of potential energy all at once. Crappy welds are a known issue with these things, but don't take my word for it. Google Bearcat Splitter Recall. <laughs> Next, I'm going to remove the wedge, which is a second weak link on this $2,200 splitter. It doesn't split so much as violently bifurcate rounds. got chunks of siding missing from my garage from this thing. Don't stand next to it. To get this valve off the cylinder, you need a special slim hydraulic service wrench, or a cheap Lowe's wrench and an angle grinder. For the win. You can't screw off the valve assembly with the elbow installed, and you can't unscrew the elbow with the valve assembly installed. Hmm. Not so smart now, are you? Now you can unscrew the valve. It's quite heavy, so make sure you don't drop it in your drain pan and make a splash all over the place like I did. Gotta get the three fasteners holding on the driver's side guard, as well as these two on the clamp. The cylinder's mechanically free, but it's still draining, so I'm gonna let it drain fully so I don't make a mess and come back in the morning. ATF's a bitch to get out of your clothes. Good morning, YouTube. 8.30 a.m. and I just tripped over my drain pan. Well, I'm down to my house painting pants. They're the last pair of pants I have, so hopefully this goes well. Otherwise, I will be prepping and welding butt naked. Not ideal. I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera, but you can actually see the crack when I manipulate the nub. You don't want to weld with any trace of ATF in there, so. I do wish I had a MIG. I have an AC buzz box. It'll be fine. 6011, when you need your welds to be real strong, real easy, but you don't need them to look real good. I have no idea how thick the cylinder wall is, so I'm guessing at 135 amps.
Why are welders like hookers? You always find them asking for more rods and more money. I'm definitely not a welder, I'm just someone's dad who owns one. Still, for 6011 AC on a round cylinder, this ain't too bad. First a shot of primer, and then a shot of gloss black. This is a hydraulic cylinder. Is it a train? It, no, it's not a train. It's a hydraulic cylinder. This double boss o-ring fitting is how I wound up getting this splitter for free in the first place, but that's a story for later in the video. Let's get this valve back on the cylinder. One end tightens against the valve and the other against the cylinder. I find the most successful people are the ones who anticipate the possibility of failure. Well, there's no leaks, but then there wouldn't be, because if you couldn't tell by the way the ram is moving, the pump is sucking air, not fluid. Good news, it still hasn't primed, but it has started leaking. See how frothy it is? Those are bubbles from cavitation. It means it needs fluid. $40 of brand new fluid later, and it's barely at the low mark on the dipstick. Don't be an idiot like me. Always use a clean grade pan so you can reuse it. Since it's clearly leaking, there's nothing to do but take it back apart. This time, I'm saving the fluid properly. I've got the line off the cylinder, so when I push on it, the air has somewhere to go. I'm guessing the moron I hired to weld this for me overheated the cylinder and cooked the seals. To get this apart, you gotta pound on the gland end here to pull out this snap ring. Focus. Once that's out, you can pull the whole piston right out. Sit rep. I've used every Jeremy Clarkson I've got, and that gland end will not budge. Even if I could get it out, Bearcat doesn't stock seal kits for this three-year-old splitter anyway, so I'm still screwed. It doesn't happen often, but I'm going to have to take it to my buddy's shop and let professionals handle it and get it apart for me. No shame in it. I did my best. Let's see how the pros make out with it. As predicted, she's properly dickered. I had to pay them 70 bucks to get that apart for me, money I'm never going to see again, but I think they earned it, and frankly I was cackling the entire time I was editing that, so that was worth it. Here's the piston. See that nick? Toast. If you get yours apart safely, you can take the parts to your local hydraulic supplier and have them match up new seals for you, if you can't find a kit online. That melted seal that ain't no thing, but the aluminum is all scored up where it got hung up on something during quote-unquote disassembly. Take a look at the right trunnion here. Nice and flush. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the edge of the left trunnion is raised right here. So what happened is this trundle bent up during a particularly hard split and pushed the side of the cylinder in. My weld was good. But in addition to cooking the seal, I also welded it in a subtly bent position. 
This cylinder's never going to seal again. The shaft also has a bunch of nicks and scratches in the chrome. I don't know how that could have happened. It was handled so ginger carefully. Normally, this is where I would order the factory replacement part. But first of all, yikes. And second of all, nobody has any in stock. In addition to giving me closure and a good laugh, my mechanic tipped me off about this aftermarket MTD cylinder made by Tool Tough. It should fit for half the price. It's a half inch bigger, so it'll have one eighth more power and move one eighth slower. It's got the right stroke, fittings, and mounting style. I'd sure like to see it in person before plunking down 400 bucks, but what the hell, I'm feeling lucky. Well, my gamble is not off to a good start. Yeesh. Oh, oh God damn it. It fits right up, look at that. I was worried because it's a half inch wider than the stock one, so I didn't think it would fit. Wait a minute. Stock one is four inches, and the new one is also four inches. Also, don't call me transphobic, but uh, that ain't female. That is, but it's supposed to be male. And smaller. Also, I did not know Jack Lynx made hydraulic cylinders. So, yeah, not only have I been scammed, but now I'm hungry for cheddar cheese beef sticks. I don't want to say the name of the seller, Best in Midwest, but neither Amazon nor Tool Tough have heard of them, so there's a mystery. Shout out to Tool Tough, who had an engineer reach right out to me to help me find the right part, directly from them. Now that's a box. Hardly any damage. Just enough to keep it from being too good to be true. The top fitting is correct. The cylinder diameter looks as advertised. And the bottom cylinder fitting is also correct. They sell the same cylinder without this bracket on here for 30 extra bucks, but 30 bucks is 30 bucks. I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't seeing it, but the hard line even bolts right up. No modifications needed at all. This may turn out to be a truly painless upgrade. Oh, wait. Yeah, perfect. If your valve isn't clocked or rotated right, don't worry. This fitting here, it's adjustable. I had to go ahead and order a second slim wrench from Angle Grinder Depot. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna demonstrate this over on the bench. Back the fitting off the valve, and you'll see it has two independent ends. One end gets tightened up against the valve body and the other up against the cylinder. This steel clamping bracket obviously isn't gonna fit since I decided to go for the bigger diameter cylinder here. So I'll have to figure something else out to keep the heavy cylinder from falling down. The factory brackets over there definitely aren't gonna fit the beefier trunnions on this MTD cylinder. Before I go any further, a quick functional test. It's alive! It's alive! Like I said, the factory brackets fit the beefier trunnions on this MTD cylinder perfectly. Beautiful chrome shaft. Seems like a quality part. Also, unlike the factory cylinder, this one is designed to be rebuilt easily with standard common size off-the-shelf parts. Should have seen this coming. The oil level was just at the low mark on the dipstick, and now I've got a larger cylinder. It's sucking air and cavitating again. Nothing another trip to Advance Auto couldn't fix. Running and splitting smoothly now. I don't really feel the extra three tons, but then this hickory splits like soft butter. And plus side, I also don't notice the slower speed. I've got some 90 year old ash rounds to split, so that'll be my real test. So why do I say, oh, they don't want you fixing the splitter? Well, Echo dumped their Crary Industries Bearcat products in 2020, and Echo Bearcat just became Crary Bearcat. 
After lawsuits and major recalls, and presumably crappy sales, it's no surprise that the log splitter line and related parts support quietly disappeared from the Bearcat website. If you see one of these for sale used, do not bother. I pulled this from the scrap pile after my neighbor lost patience after a few short years. Non-existent parts support, whack-a-mole leak repairs, including that double boss o-ring that leaked since new, despite several half-assed repair attempts by the local lawnmower shop. Plus, multiple failed welds that had to be fixed. Well, that would piss me off too, so I don't blame him for getting rid of it. I, however, am only into this the cost of the cylinder repair here. If I'd paid retail for it new, I'd be tempted to follow the advice on the sticker here. And recycle the whole thing. But f*** you, Bearcat. I don't give up easily, and I'm going to keep fixing this thing and keep it running forever, even if it is just out of spite. Hopefully you can too. Thanks for watching.